of our divine mother our divine mother says a friendship free from desire and attachments might be the ideal solution but to be carried out it requires a perfect mastery over oneself and an unshakable discipline of the vital and the body and as for the moment it is not yet the case it is wiser not to tempt the devil and to cut all relation with my blessing says our divine mother words of our lord shri aurobindo from the book basis of yoga chapter 5 topic physical consciousness subconscious sleep dream and illness page 107 new stanza our lord shri aurobindo says the subconscious is universal as well as individual like all the other main parts of the nature but there are different parts or planes of the subconscious all upon earth is based on the inconscient as it is called though it is not really inconscient at all but rather a complete subconscious a suppressed or involved consciousness in which there is everything but nothing is formulated or expressed A large sheer window says the subconscious lies between this inconscient and the conscious mind life and body it contains the potentiality of all the primitive reactions to life which struggle out to the surface from the dull and inert strands of matter and form by a constant development a slowly evolving and self formulating consciousness it contains them not as ideas perceptions or conscious reactions but as fluid substance of these things but also all that is consciously experienced sinks down into the subconscious not as precise though submerged memories but as obscure yet obstinate impressions of experience and these can come up at any time as dreams as mechanical repetitions of past thought feelings action etc as complexes exploding into action event etc the subconscious is the main cause why all things repeat themselves and nothing ever gets changed except in appearance it is the cause why people say character cannot be changed the cause also of the constant return of the things one hope to have got rid of forever all seeds are there and all some scars and all some scars of the mind vital and body it is the main support of death and disease and the last fortress seemingly impregnable of the ignorance all too that is suppressed without being wholly got rid of sinks down there and remains there as seed ready to surge up or sprout up at any moment a lord sure window says the subconscious is the evolutionary basis in us it is not the whole of our hidden nature nor is it the whole origin of what we are but things can rise from the subconscious and take shape in the conscious parts and much of our smaller vital and physical instincts moments habits characters forms has this source 
there are three occult sources of our action the superconscient the subliminal the subconscient but of none of them are we in control or even aware what we are aware of is the surface being which is only an instrumental arrangement the source of all is the general nature universal nature individualizing itself in each person for this general nature deposits certain habits of moment personality character faculties dispositions tendencies in us and that whether formed now or before our birth is what we usually call ourselves a good deal of this in habitual moment and use in our own conscious parts on the surface a great deal more is concealed in the other unknown three which are below or behind the surface but what we are on the surface is being constantly set in motion changed developed or repeated by the waves of the general nature coming in on us either directly or else indirectly through others through circumstances through various agencies or channels i'm not sure when you say some of this flows straight into the conscious parts and acts there but our mind ignores its source appropriates it and regards all that as its own a part comes secretly into the subconscious or sinks into it and waits for an opportunity of rising up into the conscious surface a good deal goes into the subliminal and may at any time come out or may not may rather rest there as unused matter part passes through and is rejected thrown back or thrown out or split into the universal sea our nature is a constant activity of forces supplied to us out of which or rather out of a small amount of it we may make what we will or can what we make seems fixed and form for good but in reality it is all a play of forces a flux nothing fixed or stable the appearance of stability is given by constant repetition and recurrence of the same vibrations and formations that is why our nature can be changed in spite of vivekananda saying and horace at age and in spite of the conservative resistance of the subconscious but it is a difficult job because the master mode of nature is this obstinate repetition and recurrence as for the things in our nature that are thrown away from us by rejection but come back it depends on where you throw them very often there is a sort of procedure about it the mind rejects its mentalities the vital its vitalities the physical its physicalities these usually go back into the corresponding domain of general nature it all stays at first when that happens in the environmental consciousness which we carry about with us by which we communicate with the outside nature and often it persistently rushes back from there until it's so absolutely rejected or thrown far away as it were that it cannot return upon us any more but when what the thinking and willing mind rejects is strongly supported by the vital it leaves the mind indeed but sinks down into the vital rages there and tries to push up again and reoccupy the mind and compel or capture or mental acceptance when the higher vital too the heart or the larger vital dynamis rejects it it sinks from there and takes refuge in the lower vital with its mass of small current moments that make up our daily littleness 
when the lower vital two rejects it it sinks into the physical consciousness and tries to stick by inertia or mechanical repetition rejected even from there it goes into the subconscious and comes up in dreams in passivity in extreme tamas the inconscient is the last resort of the ignorance as for the waves that recur from the general nature it is the natural tendency of the inferior forces there to try and perpetuate their action in the individual to rebuild what he has unbuilt of the deposits in him so they return on him often with an increased force even with a stupendous violence when they find their influence rejected but they cannot last long once the environmental consciousness is cleared unless the hostilities or hostels take a hand even then these can indeed attack but if the sadhak has established his position in the inner self they can only attack and retire it is true that we bring most of ourselves or rather most of our predispositions tendencies of reaction to the universal nature from past lives heredity only affects strongly the external being besides all the effects of heredity are not accepted even there only those that are in consonance with what we are to be or not preventive of it at least the subconscious is a thing of habits and memories and repeats persistently or whenever it can old suppressed reactions reflexes mental vital or physical responses it must be trained by a still more persistent insistence of the higher parts of the being to give up its old responses and take on the new and the true ones these are the words of our lord shri arbindo and right as we the hidden link carried from birth to birth from